Hey, basketball fans, welcome back to Tips and Streams, your go-to spot for the hottest NBA regular season predictions. I'm Kokan, and I'm here to break down today's matchups and give you the edge you need to make the best bets. Before we dive in, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like this video. Your support means the world to us. Remember, our channel has no sponsors and relies solely on the love and support of viewers like you. Even a small donation by pressing the thanks button under the video helps us keep bringing you top-notch content every day. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and fellow basketball enthusiasts. And we love hearing from you, so drop a comment below and let us know what you want to see in our forecasts. Your feedback helps us improve and bring you the content you crave. Let's jump right into today's NBA predictions. We've got some exciting games lined up, so stay tuned and let's get that winning streak going. Today we have predictions for six NBA games. The first prediction for today is for a game between the Cleveland Cavaliers and Atlanta Hawks. The Cavs and Hawks are gearing up for another showdown, and if the last game was any clue, we're in for a wild one. Cleveland has been one of the hottest teams this season, showing off their depth and star power. With Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland running the backcourt and Evan Mobley anchoring the paint, they've got the kind of roster that makes you sit up and take notice. But last time out against Atlanta? Man, they got caught slipping. They had control at halftime, but let the game unravel in the second half, and the fourth quarter was just rough. Atlanta dropped 37 points in that stretch, leaving Cleveland looking like they'd forgotten how to close out. On the flip side, the Hawks came out swinging. Trey Young was absolutely in his bag, handing out 22 assists like it was a clinic. That's superstar stuff. DeAndre Hunter stepped up with 26 points, and Jalen Johnson added a spark, showing that Atlanta has more depth than people give them credit for. The Hawks may not have consistency on their side, but when they're clicking, they're a handful for anyone. Their biggest issue, though, is defense. It's shaky at best. Letting opponents drop over 120 a game? That's playing with fire, especially against a team like Cleveland that can explode offensively when they're dialed in. Looking ahead, Cleveland's got some adjustments to make. They couldn't buy a bucket from deep in the last game, shooting a rough 31.3% from beyond the arc. That's not going to cut it if they want to reclaim their dominance. I expect Mitchell and Garland to come out gunning, looking to set the tone early and get Atlanta on their heels. And let's be real, Cleveland's defense is better than what they showed. They've got to tighten up their rotations and keep Trey from orchestrating the kind of offensive masterclass he pulled off last time. Still, you can't count out Atlanta. Trey's got that swagger, and if Hunter and Johnson can step up again, the Hawks can make things interesting. They've proven they can run with anyone when their offense is humming. What they need now is to dig in on defense, contest shots, and force Cleveland to work for everything. If they can do that, they've got a legit shot at keeping this one tight. Personally, I think Cleveland's gonna come out swinging after that wake-up call. They've got too much firepower and experience to let Atlanta catch them off guard twice. But here's the thing, the Hawks aren't just gonna roll over. Trey and the squad have shown they've got the grit to hang around, and I wouldn't be surprised if they keep this one close. My take? Cleveland pulls out the win, but the Hawks cover the 8.5 point spread. This one's gonna be a battle from start to finish. Buckle up. The second prediction for today is for a game between the Orlando Magic and Brooklyn Nets. This matchup between the Orlando Magic and Brooklyn Nets has all the makings of a nail-biter. Both teams are on a roll and have been absolute cash cows for betters lately, which makes this one even more intriguing. Orlando has been a defensive juggernaut this season, locking down opponents and giving up just 102.9 points per game, the best mark in the league. That's not just solid, that's championship-level defense in a league where scoring seems to go through the roof every year. Even with Paolo Banchero sidelined, the Magic haven't missed a beat. Franz Wagner has been a revelation, stepping into the spotlight like he's been waiting for this moment. The guy is putting up buckets on the regular and looks like he can't be stopped. His brother Moritz is doing work in the paint, creating matchup problems and opening up the floor. And let's not forget Cole Anthony and Jonathan Isaac off the bench. They've been spark plugs, keeping this team humming when the starters need a breather. It's been a total team effort, and that's what's scary about this squad. They're not just surviving without Banchero, they're thriving. Now, Brooklyn is no pushover. They've been quietly building some serious momentum, coming off a killer road trip where they took down the Suns, Warriors, and Kings as underdogs. That's impressive no matter how you slice it. Dennis Schroeder has been leading the charge, and while Cam Thomas might be out, the Nets have shown they're deep enough to hang with anyone. Schroeder's ability to push the pace and create in transition is going to be a huge factor against a disciplined Magic defense. What makes Brooklyn dangerous is their shooting. 
they drained 23s against Golden State, and if they get hot from downtown, it's lights out. Their defense has also shown some grit lately, clamping down in crunch time and holding the Warriors to just 28 points in the fourth quarter. That kind of late game intensity can swing a game in their favor, especially against a young Magic team that's still finding its identity without their star. This one's going to come down to who sets the tone. If Orlando can slow things down and make this a grinded out defensive battle, they've got the upper hand. They've been winning ugly all season, and that's a skill not every team has. On the flip side, if Brooklyn can turn this into a shootout and get their snipers going, it could be a long night for the Magic. The bookies initially set the Magic as 4.5 point favorites, but once the Nets' extensive injury list was announced, that line shifted significantly, bumping the Magic up to 7.5 point favorites. This one's tough to call. Despite missing Cam Thomas, the Nets have pulled off some jaw-dropping road wins, knocking off the Kings, Warriors, and Suns back-to-back. -back. That's no small feat, but here's the kicker, Brooklyn's injury report is stacked with 10 names. If this trend keeps up, it's hard to say if they'll even have enough bodies to suit up. Now, if guys like Dennis Schroeder, Dorian Finney-Smith, Cameron Johnson, Nick Claxton, and Wilson are clear to play, I lean toward the Nets. They've got the grit and the firepower to keep this game competitive. But if the absences pile up, especially with key pieces like Johnson and Schroeder potentially sidelined, I'm rolling with the magic to not just take a win, but also cover that spread. For anyone looking to put money into this matchup, staying glued to the injury updates is crucial. This game hinges on who's actually suiting up, so keep an eye on those rosters before locking in your bets. Welcome to BetUS, Sportsbook and Casino your ultimate hub for secure and thrilling sports betting and casino gaming. BetUS is one of the oldest and most reliable online sports books in the U.S., serving millions of clients all over the globe each month. BetUS, trusted for over 30 years, offers huge welcome bonuses, countless betting options, and many deposit and payout methods. Depositing funds is a breeze and safe, with a minimum deposit of just $10. Payouts are fast and hassle-free, beginning at only $50. Choose from various payout options like MoneyGram, Couriered Check, Cryptocurrency, or BankWire. Signing up is quick and easy. For signing up, you can use the link in the description and enjoy a generous 125% welcome bonus of up to $3,000. By signing up using the link in the description, you'll also support us as we earn a small commission from your registration at BetUS. Thank you for supporting us. Join now and start winning. The third prediction for today is for a game between the Los Angeles Clippers and Minnesota Timberwolves. This Timberwolves Clippers showdown feels like two squads headed in completely different directions. The Clippers are managing to keep things rolling despite some big hurdles, while the Timberwolves seem stuck in a rut, their play disjointed and their chemistry clearly strained. You can almost sense the calm confidence coming from one bench and the rising frustration from the other. Let's talk Clippers. No Kawhi? No problem for now anyway. James Harden has taken the reins and is showing everyone why he's still that guy. He's running the offense with poise, putting up solid numbers, and bringing a sense of calm to the floor. This team's identity is built around defense, and they're making a count. Fifth in the league in defensive efficiency? That's no fluke. They're cleaning the glass like it's their job, shutting down second chance points, and fueling their transition attack. Offensively, though, they're still a work in progress. Turnovers? Yikes. Scoring consistency? Let's just say it's a grind. But when your defense is the solid, you can afford to scrape by, and that's exactly what they've done, six wins in their last seven games. That's the mark of a team that knows how to handle business. On the flip side, you've got the Timberwolves, and man, it's been rough. Big hopes coming into the season after last year's playoff push, but they've fallen short of the hype. Losing Carl Anthony Towns in that deal with the Knicks has thrown things off. Sure, Julius Randle has been decent, but the team just isn't clicking. Their overtime meltdown against the Rockets the other night? Brutal. They had that game in the bag, but let it slip. That's becoming their MO, flashes of brilliance followed by complete collapse. Their defense is passable, but their struggles on the boards are glaring, especially against a team like the Clippers that feasts in that area. And their offense? It's like a light switch on and off at the worst times. The bigger problem might be off the court. There's chatter about internal friction, and Anthony Edwards calling the squad soft doesn't exactly scream team unity. You can see the frustration bubbling over. It's like they're searching for answers, but coming up empty, and that's a tough headspace to be in when you're facing a team that's finding ways to win even without its stars. So, how does this one shake out? For me, it hinges on one key factor, Norman Powell. 
If Powell suits up, I'm all in on the Clippers covering the 5.5 point spread and maybe even delivering a tough pill for Timberwolves fans to swallow. He's that crucial piece who can tip the scales. But if he's sidelined, I think the Wolves have a shot. All they'd need to do is put the clamps on Harden and the Clippers rhythm could crumble. The Timberwolves might be in a slump, but they've got more in the tank than they're showing right now. This could be the game that sparks their turnaround, especially if they capitalize on Powell's potential absence. For betters, the injury report is a must-watch, it could make or break this game. Keep an eye on those updates, because in a matchup like this, every piece matters. Before we move on, I have a quick favor to ask. If you're enjoying the content, please take a second to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing might seem like a small action, but it actually makes a big impact for us. Plus, it's completely free for you. Have you clicked that subscribe button? Awesome, thank you so much for your support. Now let's dive back into the video. The fourth prediction for today is for a game between the Boston Celtics and Chicago Bulls. The Boston Celtics are taking their six-game winning streak to Chicago, ready to square off against the Bulls in a game that feels more like a chess match than just another midseason clash. Both teams have a lot riding on this one, tied at the top of East Group C in the NBA in-season tournament. The stakes? A chance to advance and keep the dream alive. But let's be real, Boston is sitting pretty at 15-3, while the Bulls, at 8-12, are scrapping for every ounce of respect. Boston's three-point game is their bread and butter. I mean, they're chucking up over 50 triples a night, and they're not just throwing bricks. 37.5% of those shots are falling. That's ninth best in the league. The return of Chris Stapp's Porzingis only amplifies the Celtics' arsenal. With him back in the fold, they've got a guy who can stretch the floor and bully opponents in the paint. The Latvian big man doesn't just add size, he brings a new dimension to their offense, which was already cruising with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown running the show. Those two are the kings of drive and kick, breaking down defenses and feeding wide open shooters. This Celtics squad isn't about speed, they're about precision. They're third in the league in offensive rating, dropping 120 points a game, and they take care of the rock better than anyone else in the league. On the other end, the defense is showing signs of tightening up, especially with Porzingis swatting shots at the rim. Tatum, in particular, is playing like a man on a mission, as if he's still shaking off the ghosts of a rough Olympic outing. On the flip side, you've got the Chicago Bulls, a team built for chaos. They play at a breakneck pace, leading the league in possessions per game, and they're all about outscoring their problems. Their offense isn't the issue, it's clicking. They're fifth in points per game, and their three-point shooting has been surprisingly sharp, hitting 38.3% from deep. Zach Levine, Nikola Vucevic, and Kobe White are all averaging close to 20 a night, and when those three get going, they can light it up with the best of them. Vucevic, especially, is a sneaky weapon as a passing big, keeping defenses guessing. But here's the problem with Chicago. Their defense is basically optional. They're ranked 25th in defensive rating, and they're giving up buckets like they're handing out candy on Halloween. Coach Billy Donovan has these guys running and gunning, hoping to catch teams off guard in transition. It works in spurts, but against a disciplined squad like Boston, that kind of all-gas, no-breaks approach might not hold up. If Chicago has any shot in this one, they've got to clamp down on Boston's three-point barrage. That's easier said than done, though, because the Celtics are surgical from deep. Meanwhile, Boston's game plan should be simple, slow the game down, force Chicago to play in the half court, and exploit their shaky defense. The Celtics know how to execute in tight moments, and with Porzingis back, they're even better equipped to punish mismatches inside and out. This game has fireworks written all over it. Both teams can fill it up, and the over feels like the play to me. The line is set at 241.5, and with Boston averaging nearly 19 made threes per game and Chicago not far behind, I see this turning into a shootout. Boston's defense gives them the edge, but the Bulls won't go down without a fight, especially at home. When the dust settles, I'm leaning toward Boston to pull this one out, but it's going to be a high-scoring, fast-paced game that could easily turn into a highlight reel. Tatum and Levine are bound to put on a show, and I wouldn't be surprised if this one goes right down to the wire. Back the over, it feels like the safest call in what should be an electric battle. The fifth prediction for today is for a game between the Oklahoma City Thunder and Los Angeles Lakers. This matchup between the Lakers and Thunder has all the makings of a classic, and I'm hyped to see how it unfolds. You've got two teams with very different styles and stories, both with plenty on the line in this NBA Cup showdown. Let's break it down because there's a lot to unpack here. The Thunder have been balling out all season, and it's no surprise they're in the mix as one of the Western Conference's elite squads. 
This team is young, hungry, and locked in defensively like no other. Mark Danio deserves all the credit in the world for turning this group into an absolute fortress on the defensive end. They're allowing just 104.1 points per 100 possessions, the best mark in the league, and that's been their bread and butter. Even with Chet Holmgren sidelined, they've barely missed a beat, showing incredible depth and resilience. Offensively, it's the Shy Gilgis Alexander show, and let me tell you, this guy is the real deal. Averaging nearly 30 a night, he's as smooth as they come and thrives in crunch time. Jalen Williams has also stepped up big, dropping over 21 a game and proving to be a legit second option. Sure, their three-point shooting isn't setting the world on fire, but when you can get to the line as often as they do and knock down free throws at such a high clip, you're always in the game. That said, their win over the Warriors earlier this week left a little to be desired. They let a 19-point lead slip away, barely scraping by against a Golden State team missing Steph Curry. A win's a win, but that one doesn't exactly scream dominance. Now, let's talk about the Lakers. What a roller coaster they've been this season. After getting bounced in the first round last year, they shook things up big time, bringing in JJ Redick as head coach. It's a bold move, especially for a guy with zero prior coaching experience, but hey, so far, it's been a mixed bag. The Lakers have been streaky hot one week, cold the next, but when they're on, they can hang with anyone. Anthony Davis is playing out of his mind right now, averaging 29 and 11, and looking like a guy who's finally put it all together. And then there's LeBron. What can you even say about this dude? At nearly 40, he's still stuffing the stat sheet and running the show, racking up triple doubles like it's nothing. He may not be scoring like he used to, but his overall impact on the game is as strong as ever. The Lakers' offense has been top tier, ranking sixth in the league, but their defense is where things get dicey. They're giving up 118.3 points per 100 possessions, which is near the bottom of the pack. That's a tough look, especially against a team like OKC that thrives on capitalizing off mistakes and slowing the game down. If the Lakers want to take this one, they'll need to tighten up defensively and find a way to make the Thunder uncomfortable in their half-court sets. This being an NBA Cup game just adds more spice to the mix. OKC is sitting at 1-1 in the group, and with no team ever advancing to the knockout round with two losses, they've got to be feeling the pressure. The Lakers, at 2-1, know a win here could all but punch their ticket to the next stage. It's clear both teams will come out swinging, but the Thunder's defense has been on another level in these games, allowing just 193 points across their first two cup matchups. Meanwhile, the Lakers have been shaky, still carrying a negative point differential despite their solid record. I get why the Thunder might look like the safer bet here. They've been playing solid ball and have a lot of momentum, but something about this line doesn't sit right with me. The Lakers are back on their home court, where they've bagged 7 of their 11 wins this season, and let's not overlook their track record against OKC. Winning 5 of the last 6 matchups against the Thunder is no small feat, and it feels like they've got a mental edge in this matchup. Plus, when it comes to these tournament games, the Lakers don't mess around. They've made it clear they want to defend that title. Now, I'll admit, this game isn't exactly screaming, lock of the night, but enough signs are pointing to the Lakers to make me lean their way. If Jalen Williams ends up sitting out for OKC, that's another big boost for LA. With all that in mind, I think the Lakers can not only hang with the Thunder, but also cover that two-point spread. It's not a slam dunk pick, but the value seems to be on the Lakers' side here. The sixth prediction for today is for a game between the Sacramento Kings and Portland Trailblazers. The Sacramento Kings are heading to Portland for a showdown with the Trailblazers, and I'm feeling confident about how this one shakes out. The Kings are coming off a big win over the Timberwolves on Wednesday, where they handled business with a 115-104 to victory. That game showed us flashes of what this team can do when everything's clicking. Darren Fox was a bucket as usual, dropping 26 points, and DeMantis Sabonis went full beast mode with another double-double, 27 points and 12 boards. Malik Monk even stepped up with a season-high 27. When those guys are locked in, this team is tough to beat. But let's be real, consistency has been the Kings' kryptonite. This squad is sitting at 9-10, to and it feels like they're still figuring out how to string good games together. One night, they're blowing out teams like the Trailblazers by double digits, and the next, they're dropping games to squads like the Hawks or Nets. It's frustrating because you can see the talent, Fox, Sabonis, and even guys like Keegan Murray have shown flushes. But the defense has been shaky, and when the offense doesn't bring its A game, things get dicey. On the other side, Portland has been scrappy but clearly limited. They're 7-12, and honestly, that's better than I expected given their roster. They've been hit hard by injuries, and the offense is struggling to keep up. 
They're sitting near the bottom of the league in scoring and shooting percentages across the board, whether it's from the field, three-point range, or the free throw line. Chardon Sharp has been their go-to guy, averaging 18 points, but his shooting efficiency isn't great. Anthony Simons had a breakout game recently with 30 points, and DeAndre Ayton is back in the mix after his finger injury, but let's not kid ourselves. This isn't a team that can hang with the Kings when Sacramento is rolling. The Kings' offense should be the difference maker here. Sure, they've been hit or miss, but when Fox and Sabonis are cooking, it's hard to see how Portland keeps pace. Sabonis is having an underrated season, putting up over 20 points and nearly 13 boards a game while shooting over 60%. And Fox? The guy's averaging 29 a night and looks like he's just getting warmed up. Even their role players like Monk and Murray have shown they can contribute when needed. If the Kings can force a few turnovers and control the boards, this game is theirs to lose. Portland's only hope is to turn this into an ugly, grinded out game. They've been solid in blocking shots, ranking third in the league, and they've shown some resilience at home. But let's face it, their offense doesn't have the firepower to keep up with Sacramento over four quarters. I think Sharp and Simons might make things interesting for a while, but I don't see them having enough to take this one down the stretch. The spread is set at 4.5, and honestly, I'm surprised it's that low. This feels like one of those games where the Kings' talent just overwhelms Portland. Sacramento might be inconsistent, but their ceiling is way higher than what Portland can offer right now. If these two teams played 10 times, I'd bet the Kings win at least 7. So yeah, I'm rolling with the Kings to not only win but cover the spread. Let's see them keep the momentum going and light the beam in Portland.